Today we built this raised bed out of spruce logs, log cabin style, and we will show you how we did it. Today we are going to start work on our garden. Last year we did a small tiny experiment and we grew two tomato plants in a grow bag, essentially a potting soil bag. This year we are increasing the size of our garden and we'll have an herb garden for which Matt built a raised planter, two by three feet, and we'll start a raised bed that's gonna be four by eight. So we'll start with preparing the raised bed. I'm no gardening expert, but I'm just starting small. I did some research, not comprehensive at all. So here's what I come up with. The bottom will fill with old um, uh, logs and uh, twigs and branches that is inspired by the hugo culture method. And the sides, I wanna try building out of uh, logs. We have lots of spruce logs that are uh, kind of medium size and they're fairly straight. So we'll see how that goes. And then on top, I'm kind of dividing it out per the square foot gardening method where the plants are planted in a square foot grid where smaller plants, maybe four or 16 plants per foot and other plants are maybe one plant per square foot. So let's get going on the raised garden bed. So this is the area where we're gonna put our four by eight bed. So first step is to remove some soil and figure out where to put it. The idea behind digging out the ground a little bit is so that that soil we can use on top of the hugo culture bed. We've cleared out the area where the raised bed is going to go. So now it's time to pick some logs that we're going to use for the sides. What we're after is logs, probably somewhere around six inches in diameter. We are trying to make a four by eight raised bed. So we want each log to be about maybe a foot long on either end. So that means we want the four foot long, uh, four foot long edge logs to be about six feet long and the eight foot long edge logs to be about 10 feet long. So six plus the 10, that's 16 foot, and most of our logs are cut to 17 feet. So that should work pretty well without too much wastage. The challenge is gonna be finding ones that are straight, about the right diameter, and with as little taper as possible. We want them to be a fairly consistent diameter all the way along. So I think it's time to go log shopping. This is our diameter tape, and it works really nicely. You just wrap the tape around the log read it off and for example this one is just under five inches in diameter so we are we're looking for ones that are just a little bit bigger than that so that one there is almost exactly six inches so i think this could be a good candidate this is the fat end of the log for most logs on this pile so uh yeah that could be a good one there unfortunately it's at the back of the pile under a few other logs so uh, I'm just going to mark that with an X so we know that that's a candidate. And in total, we're trying to get about three layers. So if each log can do one side and one end, so one long side and one end, then we need two logs per layer. So we're looking for six logs in total. I think that one on the right. Really this one here underneath. Yeah. If it's just under six logs, aren't you? I knew you were going to say that because I can't get to that one. So that's five. Uh, actually, it might be a little bit more. Five and a, five and a half. Yeah, yeah. take that one. Where was that one left? This one. Yeah. But yeah, that's five and a half. Okay, that's three. This one though, I think it tapers quite a lot, so we might not get the whole thing out of this. But that's okay. We can take a ten foot section.
And now we have two halves. I'll use these as the starting blocks for the end pieces. Yeah, so that's my first time ripping a log with a chainsaw, freehand, like that. So, reasonably happy with that effort. It's not a ripping chain that I've got on there, so it's uh, definitely struggled a little bit. Do you want to get a few of these knobs out because another log will go on top? Uh, I think it'll land about here. I meant uh, the next one. Oh, uh, see. Um, yeah, I guess so. We now have one full layer of the logs around the raised bed. On the short sides we have a half a log and then full logs all around. Now we'll break for lunch and we'll continue on afterwards. Huh? I think it's pretty solid. Yeah. Our log raised bed is done. How was your first cut? 
That was that was interesting. Bearing in mind it's been less than a year since I first ever picked up a chainsaw. Yeah. And you've never done these kind of cuts. I've never done these kind of cuts. I, I've cut like through a log or to fell a tree. I've never rip cut like down the length of a log. Yep. I've never tried to do essentially these curved cuts. The approach I used was to basically just grind away a little bit at it. Cut some slices out and grind away. I don't love running the chainsaw kind of at low RPM for that long, but it seemed to work. Yeah. Um, the chainsaw made fairly quick work of each cut, and honestly the cuts weren't as hard as I thought they were going to be. The hardest part is just approximating a semicircle mm -hmm. in your like mind as you're as you're cutting. Bearing in mind you're doing on a curved surface that curves the other way. Yeah. So it's kind of it's a bit of a messes with your head a little bit. Yeah, and but, making the right depth. And getting the right depth. Uh, I think the first few my depth was not enough, and then I think I overcompensated towards the end. And the last few were maybe a little bit too deep, but the last ones were great. The last ones were really, really tight. So there's a few gaps in the logs at the bottom, and we decided to leave that. We decided yeah. not to try and like go more and close those gaps up. Because honestly, once this thing is packed full of soil, like you're not even gonna know those gaps are there. Yes. We tried to keep an eye on the level as we went along, make sure everything was like the right dimensions and things. And I think we've ended up as level as I'm interested in getting it <laughs> for a, a log raised bed in the forest, which yes. is fundamentally what this is. And, and the reason we wanted to try to get it level is because the ground around it is not level. So it looks like it's not level, even though it actually is. It's just the ground around it is not yeah. level. So overall, um, maybe the hardest part was actually just finding logs that were going to make our life as easy as possible, but, finding ones that were really similar sized. Yes, but from all the possible <laughs> situations, we have pretty good going with yeah. logs already we, made we've into got piles. Some, there's no uh, supply chain issues here with our, our spruce log yes, inventory. Yeah. All of these are spruce logs and we know spruce log does not last in the ground as long as hemlock or cedar or any, things like that. But um, this is also not the permanent place where we'll have our garden. This is just kind of a place where that it might get full sun or at least like good amount of sun that's kind of out of the way of the building and the driveway and like where we might put equipment or other things. Yeah, flat space is a premium on our property right now and any flat space we do have, we're trying not to put anything there because we're probably gonna have to grade it yes. in a month or two's time. So this, like you say, is out of the way a little bit. Overall, uh, this used uh, six 10 foot logs. It used seven six foot logs, including the one that we ripped in half lengthways to make the halves at the bottom. There are two ways of making these kind of, well, there's multiple ways of making these. The two that we considered, you can either do the logs kind of on the same level, and then you kind of, you just mate two logs together on the same level, or you can have them in this alternating pattern like we've got, which mm -hmm. is why we have that half log at the bottom. And if you do that, each log has a saddle cut to go over the one beneath it, or the yeah. two saddle cuts to go over the ones beneath That them. seems simpler. If you wanted two at the same level, you have to make cuts on both logs. Uh, you do, although they're square cuts, they, mm. they are, are going to be easier. The, the reason that I like this one is it feels stronger. The only fasteners we've added to this is I put two nails, just three inch nails, uh, in the top short sides to anchor yeah. them down because there's no weight on top yes. of those. Yes. Um, and so I just put two nails in and that just locks those solid. Otherwise, there's nothing in here. And I think if you do the style where each layer isn't hmm. attached to the one below it with any joints or anything. I think you end up wanting to put like a piece of rebar down mm -hmm. through the corners or something like that. We didn't need to for this one. Yeah. So I think Diana was hoping I wasn't gonna use the nails uh, <laughs> to secure it at the top. But honestly, four nails, four nails not too bad. to hold an entire raised bed together, I don't think is too shabby. Total depth to the middle we measured, it's about two feet yep. from the bottom, from the ground where we cleared out some of that topsoil to the top of the long uh, edges. The long edges. Yep. And then the short edges rise another, what, four or five inches yep. on top of that. Question, would we do it again? What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I think this is a great <laughs> way how to use these logs. Although Matt wants to try a different method next time. Yeah, my, my rationale is we have a sawmill and squares are much easier to work with than circles. So throw the logs on the sawmill and either make like big six by six cants and stack those to go for a real like heavy duty type thing or just make boards and make posts and boards and things. With posts and boards, you might have trouble getting the post inside this ground that has lots of rock. It would just be resting on the ground. But, but either way, <laughs> this has taken us, I think I was timing us towards the end. It was taking us about one hour per layer. Mm -hmm. So the time to construct just the log part of this, ignoring the digging and mm -hmm. things, is probably about three hours or so, uh, three and a half hours maybe, to build these. 
and so I don't know, it's not too bad, I guess. See how long these last. Yeah, um, yeah, we're and um, you know we're definitely not expert gardeners. We're just learning and trying things out, and this is kind of the next experiment. Last year's experiment was growing tomatoes in a grow bag while we were in a RV park. Now we have our own land, so we can uh, try to experiment in a larger uh, kind of scenario. And uh, I'm sure over time, over years, we'll have perfected our gardening method. I guess it's gonna be mishmash of different methods. So first of all, it's a raised bed, which from what I read, apparently you get better drainage and the soil is warmer, I think. Something like that. Yeah, and I, and I think also given our soil is not deep yes. and it's full of roots and, and stones rocks. and yeah. yeah, it's not like we're building a raised bed on perfect soil. So this gives us actually the opportunity to fill it with good soil. Yes. Now you may be wondering, are we going to be filling this with the wood <laughs> chips and the compost that is forming in that mountain behind me? I think it's not going to be enough time. So it's mid-April now, it's about maybe three weeks until we need to start planting here. Yeah, and I think time for that to decompose, you mean? Yeah, it's not yeah. enough time for that to be actual compost. So I think the first year we'll have to bring in uh, some soil, it's like a compost soil mix because we don't either like a raised have raised bed mix raised bed mix because we don't have enough topsoil either and the stuff we do have like the small pile we took out of here is just so full of stones yeah, and rocks yeah. and roots and things by the time you remove that stuff it's yeah getting, i, I think a couple of soil sifters are going to be in our future i need yes, to build some definitely. maybe a tractor sized one and a hand sized one yeah uh, that we can use in future and i would like to use our own compost and things in future as well yeah, absolutely uh we'll probably use some of these wood chips in the bottom yes uh, so, around the decaying so logs the so the second gardening style or method <laughs> that uh, we're going to use is uh, called Hugo culture. It's a German word which means uh, a raised mound or, some, or, or mound culture, something like that. Germans, I'm sure, can explain it. And so it means we'll put um, logs and kind of already starting to rotten logs on the bottom and branches to kind of make a wooden debris layer and that apparently kind of holds moisture and that means you don't have to water the beds as much which is really nice and over time it slowly as it breaks down it releases nutrients, nutrients. into the raised bed which is good for the plants plus it's kind of good i mean we have so much wood debris around here i think that's a great way to yeah. use that and it's gonna fill you know maybe half the bed so then you don't have to put as much soil in it and that's why if you're wondering we've made such a deep raised bed yes oftentimes you can get away with a raised bed that's 12 inches or even less depending on what you're growing deep ours is is 24 inches deep mm -hmm. and that's why yeah because of that that base yeah. layer we're not planning to grow any root vegetables i don't think this uh, year i think i'll try some carrots you might do some carrots okay and radishes okay so the, the depth is kind of useful okay yeah so i think a 12 inch I still need to look that up. So <laughs> if you have suggestions or any comments about how to grow stuff, please let us know in the comments because I uh, definitely need that. And then uh, we were measuring quite accurately because we wanted to get four by eight feet dimensions inside dimensions. And this is because we want to uh, lay the plants out in a square foot gardening method where you allocate the plants to certain pattern with, within a square foot and you basically divide the whole area in square feet. Yeah. So uh, that's, I guess, the third gardening method. So I'm just, I've seen a little bit of each of those. So I'm just kind of combining and we'll see what works and um, hopefully something grows. Yeah. So for now, I, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. This yeah. thing is, I mean, we're sitting on it right now. This thing is absolutely solid. We tried shaking all the sides and there's just no movement at all. Obviously the logs are pretty heavy but they're also all locked together. Yeah. So once we fill this with soil, the soil is going to press out on the sides. And my guess is this thing is going to be just absolutely solid. Yeah. Um, so, so we're yeah. not going to be able to fill it today because we don't have the soil, but I believe the first layer on the very bottom that I want to put is uh, cardboard. I think the reason people use cardboard at the bottom of their raised beds is to suppress the weeds. I don't think we really have weeds in the forest, but we have all sorts of roots and probably all sorts of small saplings might want to grow here. Uh, so I think it will be good to put the cardboard down. Also, we have a lot of cardboard <laughs> in our shipping container. So this also is going to be good use. Uh, so it doesn't go to the landfills or, or I guess recycling. And then at the very, very top, once we plant the plants, we'll put mulch and use our wood chips for, for, for the mulch to also suppress the weeds and uh, hopefully then we don't have to weed much. In general, I like the thought of the gardening methods that reduce the amount of work you have to do, either weeding or watering or 
um, anything like that. Yep. So if you did enjoy this video, watching how we built this raised bed for uh, for our new property using these spruce logs, then be sure to let us know. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think. And if this is your first time or you haven't yet done so, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow us along as we build our dream home here in Vermont.